Ever feel like you're tired all the time? It doesn't matter how much rest you get, you still feel the same. Just a little bit of exertion makes you crash. Well, you might have chronic fatigue syndrome, and it's more common than you think. Hear me out. Chronic fatigue syndrome, or its fancy name, myalgic encephalomyelitis, which just means muscle pain with inflammation of the brain and spinal cord. It's a complex multi-system condition that lasts for six months or longer that is still quite poorly understood. And you might wonder, isn't this just fatigue, tiredness? We all get tired, it's no big deal. But in reality, it's a terrible condition that can destroy your quality of life. Patients and family members actually rate the function and quality of life of patients with chronic fatigue syndrome worse than those with chronic disease like multiple sclerosis. The clinicians used to believe that chronic fatigue syndrome was mainly a psychological issue. But recent research is turning that idea on its head. Scientists have found abnormalities in energy metabolism, particularly in the nerves and immune system. As it turns out, patients with chronic fatigue syndrome have impaired energy production, and their exercise performance is significantly worse on the second day of testing compared to healthy individuals. This means we've been approaching this condition all wrong. Now let's talk diagnosis. To be diagnosed, we first need to rule out other causes of fatigue. And the biggest culprit would be mental health issues like depression, anxiety, post-traumatic stress disorder, poor sleep, substance use, sometimes infectious diseases like HIV, some sinister causes like cancer or autoimmune diseases. If any of these go wrong, you can have secondary fatigue and treating the cause is what will fix your problem. Once we are certain there is no secondary culprit for your fatigue, we need to make sure your lifestyle is not in the way. Before you think, oh my god, here we go again, blaming all my fatigue on my lifestyle, it's still a hurdle we must correct before diagnosing you with chronic fatigue syndrome. Because everybody needs a good quality sleep, good diet, and regular exercise. So we gotta make sure these are taken care of before we move on to the next stage. Which is diagnosis of chronic fatigue syndrome? Now diagnosis can be tricky since there is no single test for it. Doctors typically look for these core criteria. Severe unexplained fatigue lasting more than six months. Post-exertional malaise, which means patients feel worse or it's sometimes called a crash or a relapse after any amount of physical or mental stress. Unrefreshing sleep. Additionally, patients often experience brain fog or orthostatic intolerance which means patients feel dizzy or faint when they stand up too quickly or for too long. Now let me introduce you to Sarah, a 35-year-old teacher from Ohio. Sarah is your typical multitasker, balancing work, family, and a social life. About a year ago, she started feeling tired all the time. At first, she blamed it on her busy schedule, but when a vacation and extra sleep didn't help, she knew something was wrong. Sarah's fatigue was relentless and didn't improve with rest. She also started experiencing brain fog making it hard to concentrate in class, and she felt worse after doing simple chores around the house. After months of testing, ruling out other conditions like depression, infection, cancer, thyroid conditions, and anemia, she was finally diagnosed with chronic fatigue syndrome. Now, what treatment is available for Sarah? Sadly, there is no one-size-fits-all medication for chronic fatigue syndrome. If brain fog and fatigue are the main concerns, we suggest memory aids, Cognitive pacing, where you break down the mental task you need to do into manageable parts and do them with regular rests, increasing the size of parts you can handle as you go. Performing your task while lying down are probably your best options. And only if there is strong indication, stimulants are sometimes used. For post-exertional malaise, you might need assistive device like a scooter, shower chair, steer lift. You need to try to avoid your triggers, whether it's physical or mental, to get some disability benefits might be necessary at times. School and work accommodations are necessary as well. What doesn't work for chronic fatigue syndrome? Well, in 2011, the old recommendation was graded exercise, but newer study shows no benefit and actually potential harm for exercise. So now we actually do not recommend pushing yourself to exercise if you are truly diagnosed with chronic fatigue syndrome. Managing chronic fatigue syndrome is a journey. It requires a lot of patience, persistence, and often a bit of trial and error to find what works best for you. Stay informed and don't hesitate to reach out to doctors if you need it. And for doctors out there, remember chronic fatigue syndrome is a real condition. And the best thing we can do is acknowledge that it exists and help our patient along their journey. Thanks for watching. If you find it helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of my future videos. Take care. See you next time.